In this video, we're going to take a look at some time functions in Excel. Now, I've already entered some data in here. I've entered uh, a date, followed by a space, followed by a time. This is the actual text I entered up here. I entered the, uh, the date. Here's a space, 12, colon. I did not enter the, uh, co the last colon and the 0, 0 for the seconds here. Um, but I did type in the space, and I did type in PM. Uh, Excel doesn't care whether you type that in uppercase or lowercase letters, uh, but is pretty picky about this stuff. There must be a space here. There must be a space here. Uh, you can't type P period, M period. Uh, it has to be PM. So uh, you need to be kind of careful about how you enter in uh, times. Now, let's go take a look at these. And you know that dates are represented as serial numbers. Well, times are represented as serial numbers as well. So I'm going to make this general. And it turns out that 12 noon is uh, 40,927.5. Well, the 40,927 is the date, and the 0.5 is the time. And times are represented as a fraction of a day. So half of a day would get you to 12 noon. The other number down here, which was 4 p.m., is looks like it's two-thirds of a day. A day is 24 hours. Two-thirds of 24 would be 16. And 16 hours into the day would be 4 p.m. So that's the way that times are stored. They're just stored as fractions of a day. Let's go back and um, store this as a time now. And we'll store it just as a time. Uh, the date information is still there, but we're telling Excel we don't want to see that. Now, you can do time arithmetic just like you can do date arithmetic. So if I want to know how much time has elapsed, take the larger number, which would be 4 p.m. It's further through the day. Subtract the earlier number. And again, I get one of the Excel's formatting problems because this is a uh, format as a time, and this is format as a time. It thinks that this is supposed to be format as a time. And it's not. I want it to be formatted just as an ordinary number. And it tells me that this fraction, which is the fraction 1 sixth, uh, that's the amount of time that's elapsed in those four hours. And four hours is 1 sixth of a day, so it's doing the arithmetic correctly. Now, this is probably not what you want. Uh, what you probably want instead is you want to know how many hours that is. So if that's the fraction of a day, and I multiply it by the number of hours in a day, it should come and tell me exactly how many hours that fraction of a day represents. So if you want to do something like compute how many hours somebody has worked, you can take the time that they checked in, you can take the time they checked out, you can subtract them and you'll get a fraction of a day. But to convert that into hours, you're going to have to multiply it by 24. Now you can also just type in, you don't have to type in a date. As a matter of fact, if you're just doing stuff with times, most of the time you probably will not type in a date. So let's say somebody checks in at 8 a.m. I can just type in 8 a.m. And they work until uh, 11.30 a.m. And I want to know how much, how long they worked. I can just do the subtraction here. And again, now it's going to be three and a half hours, but it represents that as 3.30 a.m. And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that to general again. And it gives me the fraction of a day. And if I take that number and I multiply it by 24, it should tell me that that's three and a half hours. If I go up here and change the format of these two numbers and go back to general instead of date, that's the way they're being stored. Since there's a zero on the left-hand side, uh, basically that means that uh, if you consider these to be dates, that these are times on January 1st, 1900. But normally when you're dealing with dates or with times, all you care about is the time. And the value over here on the left probably should be 0. And then you're just dealing with fractions of a day. We'll take a look at some uh, date functions or some time functions, rather, in the next video.